Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we just come to you. Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. The name that changes lives, the name that changes relationships, the one that brings the lost out of darkness into your marvelous light, Father. You're the only one that can transform. You're the only one that can touch and heal. You're the only one that can save and cleanse, Lord. You're the only one that can reach where no one else is willing to and pull life out of it, God. You're just that good. You're that God. And Father, we come to you in that name this evening. And Father, we ask that you help us. We ask that you guide us. We ask that you direct us tonight, Father. For Father, we can't truly know the way unless you show us. So, Father, I pray that you would just help us tonight. I pray you'd order our steps. I pray you'd give the words that you want spoken. Give us a heart to hear. Give us a spirit to understand. Father, I pray that you would just go before us now and make the way straight and clear. And I thank you for it, and I ask it in Jesus' name. And amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Can you put your hands together and thank the Lord this evening? I know, is it, is it okay if we do something different tonight? I appreciate that. We were really going to, whether you okayed it or not. It just makes it a little easier when, you, when you're on board. But you know, I know Sunday morning we had a completely different service. Baby, I want you to go ahead and get your microphone and come on up here if you would and make welcome the most precious woman in, in the world for me. Make her welcome to the pulpit. And I, I want over here, if you could sit over there. You want to sing again, brother? Okay, you're welcome to. But uh, we want to do something a little bit different uh, this evening. I'm going to do my best to sit down. I really struggle sitting down. Um, but I want to share with you something. We've been having some, some phenomenal services, and, and I'm not trying to hinder that flow in any way, shape, or form. I'm just trying to be obedient to the Holy Ghost. And, um, and the Lord has, has placed this uh, on, on our heart for about three weeks now. And uh, we haven't been able to, to get there. We've been trying to get there, but it just wasn't time. Um, but the way that God is leave, leading this, this ministry, this, there, this move of God that, that, is, that it, God is shaping, that he's leading in, in this ministry, is, it, we have to understand it's about the Father's heart. And the Father's heart is about family. The Father's heart is about relationships and Sunday morning, how many of you were here Sunday morning, 1045 service? Um, Sunday, Sunday morning, March the 1st, we got some, mar the men got their marching orders. March 1st, 2015, the men got their marching orders. Now listen to me. As they were marching, all at once, a lot of the women and some of the men started saying, Hey, 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 where are you all at? Hey. You guys are making it hard on me. But as the men started marching, somebody was saying, hey, hey. Do you know what the word hey means? Got it. Some of that little boy or little, little child back there got it. The word hey, listen to me, the word hey has a meaning of developing a new identity for the future. And as the men were marching around and everyone was chanting, hey, 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 what you were declaring was a new identity for the future. And you see, there was a cleansing that was taking place this past weekend. I don't know if we realize it or not, but there was a, a cleansing that was taking place. There was a cleansing that was taking place, and I believe now is the opportune time to teach this this message that we've had burning on our hearts and in our hearts for years, we, we teach this, this message a lot in, in our marriage retreats. But what I want you to understand is that relationships, not just marriages, but relationships by and large are in trouble. There is an attack on relationships. There's attack upon marriages. There's attack upon relationships between parents and children. And, and we want to deal with that a little bit, the seating, if we could. If, how many hunters are there that's in here? Turkey hunters, deer hunters? Few, okay. 
Well, there's, I, I, I see you, Bill. Calm down, brother. I, I know, I know. You don't have to prove your manhood by that. It's all right. I know, I know. But, you know, it's amazing. We'll go in the woods with a turkey call in our mouth. And what we're doing, we're speaking the language of a turkey to get it to close. And we're, we're trying to appeal to it enough by speaking its language <laughs> to get it to draw near to us. Same with a deer. I can't do a grunt call very well. I tried. Okay, well, I was calling a pig there. <laughs> but, you know, we get in the woods and we try to blend in in the surroundings and we try to speak the language of what we're after. And if we can speak the language clear enough, we can get it to come in close enough to where we can apprehend it. Well, I want to talk to you about speaking the language tonight. But I want to talk to you about speaking the language of love. I lost you back there on the turkey somewhere. Because you see, the thing about it is, I want to talk to you tonight about how to love. Because it doesn't do any good to love if it isn't given properly or received properly. And I think a whole lot of relationships are in trouble because we're trying to give love, but the other one isn't receiving the love that we're trying to give. Or the one wants a love, but the other one's not willing to give to it. And it's because we're not speaking the right language. So there is a language that, that my wife and I are going to start out in about how to speak the language of love. And I want to read 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love, verses 18 and 19. For there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who has fear has been made, he, I'm sorry, he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. There is a language that we must learn how to speak if we expect those around us to receive the love we're trying to give to them. Amen? Amen. Understand before my wife takes Center stage here. Understand that love is more action than it is feeling. Go ahead, baby doll. John 13, 35. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. By the way you dress, how much scripture you can recite, no. how loud you can pray, <laughs> By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Love is what is going to show the world that you belong to Jesus Christ. It's not about the way you look. It's not about the way you dress. It's not about the way you speak. It's not about the way you pray. It's about how much you love people and how you show that love for people. Love means that you have to do something. The last time we talked together, um, we went over this, that love is more than a feeling. It's not a feeling. Love is a choice that you make every day. Every day you have to wake up in the morning and make a choice. You have to decide, today I'm going to choose to walk in love. And not only do you have to make that choice every day, but you have to make that choice upon each and every person that you come in contact with. Because you can choose to walk in love with people that you get along with easily, but not others. We have to make that choice every time someone comes across our path in a day's time. I am going to choose to walk in love with this person. That means that we have to do something. Love is action. Love is our action. That's what we do. Um, we're going to teach a little bit tonight, very small portion, on Dr. Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages. A lot of people have read this book and a lot of people have not. I recommend that every human reads this book. Um, it doesn't matter if you are married or single. It doesn't matter if you have children. If you know another person and you have a relationship with somebody, you need to read this book. It will change your life and it will change the way that you love. A lot of people don't know how to love. And a lot of people don't know how to receive love. 
This is what happens. There are five basic love languages, okay? There is uh, quality time, words of affirmation, physical touch, uh, acts of service. Giving and receiving and giving gifts. and receiving of gifts. Those are the five categories of love languages, okay? Those are the five love languages. Now, what happens is that as we're growing up in our family, we usually learn to speak the native tongue of our home, okay? Now, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about your, your native language right now. If you grew up in an English-speaking home, then English is your native language, right? If you grew up in a Spanish-speaking home, then Spanish is your native language. Now, if someone who grew up in an English-speaking home marries someone who grew up in a Spanish-speaking home, there's a good chance that they could have some communication issues, right? They have to learn to speak the language of the other person. Love languages are exactly the same. If you grew up in a household where your parents showed love to you by telling you how great you were and how much they loved you and how good you are at this and how good you are at that, then chances are words of affirmation has become your love language. And when you marry someone or you're in a relationship with someone who grew up in a family where acts of service was the love language that was spoken, where if I make your bed for you, iron your clothes for you, those are the things that I do for you because I love you and that's how you receive love, you're gonna have some communication problems in your relationship. You're doing good, baby, you keep going. <laughs> when people are in relationship, they can and usually do speak different love languages. And here's what happens. If I try to love someone by giving them a gift, that's one of my primary love languages. That means a lot to me, it's a big deal. If I give someone a gift and they don't even acknowledge that I gave them a gift and they don't reciprocate that love, it leaves me feeling rejected and I put up a wall. So then... If you get a hold of this, it'll change your life. I may try to love that person again if it's someone that I see all the time or may try to love someone else in the same way. This is how I'm loving you. I'm giving you this gift. I was thinking of you. So I'm giving you this gift. Isn't this great? and the person acts like it's not a big deal, I feel rejected again. Another wall goes up. Pretty soon, I begin to think that I'm not lovable because I'm trying to give love to these people and no one is reciprocating that love. So I'm not lovable and I've got all these walls up and pretty soon I isolate myself and I don't have relationship with any other person. That's what happens when those walls go up. You isolate yourself and love begins to break down and you just stop trying. Have you ever seen that happen to somebody? It's very, very sad when that happens. And then they begin not to be able to receive love either because maybe someone is loving you in a way that you don't understand. Anything else? Nope, on that? keep going. I'll jump in when I'm ready. Your love language is developed in your childhood. Like I said, it's either by the way that your parents showed love toward you or sometimes it could be something that was neglected when you were a child. And the way that you receive love isn't your fault. It's how you were developed, either because someone gave that to you or because it was absent. It's part of who you are. And the way that you receive that love is a need in your life. You have to understand there is a certain way that you will receive love. And someone has to give you love in that way for you to be fulfilled. And if they're not giving it to you in that right way, then there has to be some communication so that you understand how you receive love. But it isn't about you learning to, to okay, well, I just have to suck it up and i got to be loved this way. No, you must be loved the way God created you to be loved. I figured you'd shout louder than that, but okay, go ahead. Well, let me just, let me just say this so you can understand this maybe a little better. When, when we got married almost 27 years ago, right? Yeah. 27 July. Years ago in July. 27 years. Um, we had completely opposite systems of love languages. Yeah. And this is what happened when we were dating. Um, we were both doing all five love languages. We were spending countless hours together. You know, we yeah. were we were talking. We were, um, you know, getting each other little gifts and things yeah, like that. Yeah, little notes. And you know, our minds were always on each other. We were telling each other, you know, I love you so much. You're so oh, awesome. No. I was the best. <laughs> I was the best then. So, so those those I those was. love needs were being met. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. And this is what happens. Life comes along. It did. 
It did. Yeah, and right kids. there they are. <laughs> there they are. All three of them. And jobs and, and jobs. bills and oh. all these wonderful things that come along with Responsibility. life. Responsibilities. Yeah. And so what happens is you don't have the time that you once had mm. to love in every different way. So you will begin to love that person in your primary love language, the way that you receive love. Well, this is how I receive love, so that's how I'm going to give love to this person. I did that. Yes. Yes, I did. did. I told you how much I loved All you. I told time. you how beautiful you were. I told time. you how great you were. Yep. And it was just like you did. It just bounced right off like Teflon. <laughs> Didn't stick. None of it. Do you see? Words of affirmation is his primary love language. It's my last. Yeah. <laughs> So we had an issue. We had a communication problem. We had problem. an issue. We didn't even know we had we an had issue. We had no idea we had an issue until years later. Do you know how many years it took us to figure that out? A long time. A long time. So we read this book, and, um, and this has been a long time ago. A long time. Ago. We've, we've been teaching this in marriage retreats for years. But what we found out is that when he wrote down the five love languages in order of importance to him, yeah. and I did the same, they were flipped completely backwards. <laughs> Everyone's primary love language needs to be words of affirmation or physical touch. That's what I, that's what I think. I'm going to talk to you all right over here. You just became my new favorite. The amen corner. Yeah. So we had a problem in communication. There was a breakdown in communication because he was loving me with everything that he, you know, that he could possibly. Passion and yes, energy, man. Absolutely. But it wasn't, I wasn't receiving it. I was holding her hand, kissing her. Didn't translate. <laughs> Didn't translate. No. Nah. You have to love people in a way that they can understand and appreciate. And everyone is different. Let's move yeah. on a little bit. Um, oh, let's talk about the love tank for a minute. In each and every person, there is a, an invisible love tank. And every time that someone does something that translates to love to that person, then that tank goes up a little bit. Think of your gas tank on your car, okay? It can be full yeah. or it can be empty or it can be somewhere in between. Every time someone loves you in a way that you receive love, that, that goes up a little bit. The gauge goes up a little bit. And when that love tank is full, it makes a, a, a huge difference in you and in those around you, in every relationship that you have in your life, it makes a world of difference. It's like a withdrawal from your bank account. Yeah. Yeah. When you put deposits in, you don't have to worry about writing checks. But when you withdraw more than you deposit, then you have big problems. It's a bad day. If you run your car more than the gas you put in, you got big problems. Okay? And, and if you get too way, low in your gas tank, you have uh, dirt in the bottom of it. Mm -hmm and it gets sucked up into your injectors, and it costs you more money, right? Well, when your emotional love tank gets low like that, it starts sucking everything it can off the bottom, dirt and everything, and before long, your love injectors are clogged up, and you've got problems. That's good. And it's going to cause you more money to get that thing fixed than it would have just been if you'd have just put gas in it. Yep. My point is, love her the way she needs to be loved. <laughs> You won't suck that dirt off the bottom and clog those injectors up. <laughs> Once you learn these truths, you can talk to somebody for about five minutes and you can know what their love language is. It does not take long at all to understand how someone receives love. If you have a conversation with them, you will know within five to ten minutes how they receive love. And you can begin to love them in that way so that they can receive your love. I want to put a, a disclaimer and a warning out right here. Because... What we're teaching is how to love someone effectively, how to love someone in a godly manner, how to love someone in the way that they deserve and were created to be loved. You never use this to seduce someone. You never use this to lure someone away, to manipulate or to control. It's misusing what God has given it to us for. You understand? I'm putting that out there. Don't you ever use it. Say, well, pastor said, no, I'm telling you, don't you use it in, 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 a, in a foul way. Don't you dare do that. When the love tank is empty, resentment settles in. 
If you are not being loved effectively, you are going to resent the person who is trying to love you. Resentment always, if not dealt with, turns to bitterness. And we don't need bitterness in our relationships. No matter if it's a marriage, a parent-child relationship, a friendship, a church relationship, bitterness, if it gets in, can destroy, not just weaken, but destroy relationships. So be careful and don't allow resentment to get in. Resentment comes in when we don't feel loved. So we need to make sure that those love tanks stay full as much as possible. Yeah, bitterness is that dirt that you suck up off mm -hmm. the bottom. Absolutely. It really is. And, and, and I, I said that in a joking manner for you to understand what I'm talking about. But, but, it, but it's true. How many of you, by show of hands, that as you entered into to a relationship, whether it was marital or, 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 or friends or whatever, everything started out great because everything was new when you loved each other correctly? I see no hands at all. There we go. But then as things got, went, went on a little bit, maybe things as you got married, as you went on, as that friendship became to be more seasoned, maybe you didn't love each other that way. It's like, hey, something's wrong. Can I see those show? Are you in agreement with me? If you're not careful, if you don't put something in, if you don't deposit in that love tank, you'll continue to create bitterness instead of love. Go ahead, baby. Okay. Now, you said something really good there a few minutes ago that... Um, <laughs> Thanks, that, honey. That it's the way that God created us to love. And God has given us these five love languages because God yes. loves in all five. Yes, he does. You know, God, it, it just amazes me how, you know, I can look at all five of these love languages and I can think of ways that God has loved me in all of those ways. And he lavishes his love on us <laughs> in every one of those ways. And so that's how we're wired to receive love because that's how God made us in order to receive his love and to give love in return to those around us. <laughs> he is the God of love. He is love. He's the creator of it. He's the author of it. <laughs> All right. You ready? Uh, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> God's good. Oh, he's good. Yes, he is. He's good. <laughs> All right. We're going to just hit the tip of the iceberg on all five. There is so much depth and so much wealth in all of these. We just don't have time to get into all of it. But we're just going to hit the tip of the iceberg in each of the five love languages. And you're going to pick up real quick. That's me. Oh, he's good. He loves us in all these ways. Yes, he does. If you just take time, if you just look at all five of them, he'll tell you what he means to you. He'll pour gifts out on you. He'll hold you close when everyone else has left you. He'll draw you near. Oh, he's so good. Go ahead, honey. All right. Oh, he'll spend time with you. <laughs> He'll spend time with you when everyone else runs out. He pulls in a little bit close. Oh, he's good. No, I can't. No, go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll jump in. I'll jump in. All right. The first one is words of affirmation. That is telling you something. That uh, you love people by telling them that you love them, that you appreciate them, that they're great, that they're awesome, that they do this well or they do that well, giving them compliments, um, telling them you're proud of them. Um, and deposits in the love tank are saying I love you, compliments, verbal encouragement, you can do this, I know you can, you got this, cheering you on. Those are all ways that you love people if your primary love language is words of affirmation. To, to someone who this is their primary love language, words are, will be their strongest gift. Mm -hmm. 
They understand the power that talks about in Proverbs 18.21 where it talks about life and death is in the power of the tongue. That, that's why when you say to someone who their primary love language, when, when, when you cut them a little bit, it's worse than taking a knife and sticking it in them because they understand the power of words. You have to understand for someone who this is their primary love language, words is a launching pad. And, and if, if your children receive love in that way, you go ahead, you pour words out on them. It may not mean anything to you, but it'll launch them into their destiny quicker than anything. True. I think it was, was it Mark Twain that said he could live two weeks? I believe it was. I, I, believe, I believe it was. I believe it was Mark Twain. So I would say that his love language was words of affirmation. Words of affirmation to someone who loves in that way um, is just like fuel on the fire. Mm -hmm. They will feel invincible, like they can do anything as long as there's someone there telling them, mm -hmm. you can do this, you're great, you got this. Um, I, I can't tell you what that does for a words of affirmation person, and some of you are shaking your heads, so I can tell that that's your primary love language. Um, and so if you're, if you're in relationship with a person like that, that is life to them. That has to be every day that you have to say something to them to encourage them along the way. Um, it's life to them. Withdrawals uh, from the love tank for someone whose love language is words of affirmation. Failure to say, I love you. If you don't tell them that you love them, that's a major withdrawal. Uh, I heard a joke one time where uh, this couple came into the marriage counselor's office and the wife said, he never tells me he loves me anymore. And he said, well, I told you the day we got married, if it ever changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> but a lot of us are like that. You know, I don't receive love that way, so sometimes I forget how important it is to just say I love you to someone or to tell them how much I appreciate them. Put downs. Like you said, there's, it cuts even deeper to someone who loves in words. It cuts even deeper. Uh, put downs, cutting remarks. Anything like that uh, will cause major withdrawals. It may not just be words. It may be the tone of what you yes. say it. For someone who is this, this is their primary love language, they not only listen to the words, but the tones True. that you say it in. Because you can say one thing, but your tone says something else. I know it seems pretty critical, but you have to understand it is a need in their life, not a want. And we must speak the language correct, correctly and adequately so it's not just saying the right thing, but also using the right tone. Mm -hmm. Anything else on No, um, No, we, we're, the next we need to move. Yeah, we're close on time. Quality time. Undivided attention. A quality oh. time person needs attention. They need your attention, okay? Um, deposits are meaningful conversation not problem solving. Do you know how long <laughs> it has taken me to get a hold of this? And I still can't tell you that I've mastered it. I don't understand it at all. But it's quality time. The one thing I do know, the older I get, the more valuable time becomes to me. But it has been very foreign to me for my wife to come to me and tell me something and not have expectation of me fixing it. <laughs> I don't understand. I just want you to listen to me. That is foreign. If you're going to tell me something, don't expect me to do something about it. it, it it's, like, it's like saying, it's like saying, it, it's like she would come home and somebody bullied me, tell me somebody bullied me today. Well, I'm going to go find them. I'll straighten them out. No, I just want you to listen to me. That's foreign to me. <laughs> But for someone whose primary love language is quality time, they just want to sit in your presence. They just, they just want you to be near them. They want you to play a game with them. They want you to talk to them. They just want to know that they have your undivided attention. For someone whose primary love language is this, and if I'm overriding, tell me. Don't try to do something while you're talking to them. 
When this is your love language, they need you to focus on them. Look at them eyeball to eyeball. Don't hold the cell phone in one hand and try to talk to them with another hand. You're not that good. You can't do it. For someone whose love language is quality time, they have to have your undivided attention. It's a need in their life. They must have it. When you have a problem, don't you want God's undivided attention? How many times has he not given it to you? That's how he loves us. So when someone's primary love language is quality, listen, you better give it to them now. Because this 20 minutes that you have with them, you'll never have it again. When you give your spouse, your child, your friend 20 minutes of your time, you're giving them 20 minutes of your life that you'll never have to spend again. So make the most of it. Spend it wisely. If you have a spouse that that their love language is quality time, you better enjoy every minute of it. Go ahead, baby. I'm sorry if I took too much of it. Undivided attention. (laughs) Uh, Going for a walk is a good thing to do with a quality time person. Sitting on the couch watching television is not a good thing to do. That is not giving your undivided attention. Conversation, going on a walk, going on a trip together, coming home early just to spend time with that person, that's a big deal to a quality time person. Withdrawals are interruptions. I can't say enough about this. If you're talking with someone and they interrupt you, that is like (laughs) to a quality time person. Don't ever do that. The average person listens for 17 seconds before they interrupt. That's startling. (laughs) And usually it's for this purpose. Well, here's what you need to do. When when I'm spending quality time with someone face-to-face and I have their undivided attention, I'm not looking for what I need to do. I'm looking to have a conversation with them. And it's not a problem-solving session. I don't need to know what I need to do about my problem. Sometimes people just need to hear someone say, that really stinks. I don't need you to solve my problems. (laughs) Sometimes just jump in with me for just a minute. (laughs) Listen to me. Have a little bit of sympathy. You're right. That does stink. And then I'm good. Then I'm good after that. How how many here can see their quality time people? (laughs) Okay. If you have someone that you love or loves you and they just raise their hand, if you're talking with them, don't just turn your phone on vibrate. Turn it on silent. Or throw it out the window. (laughs) Because that new iPhone 6 you just purchased, it may become a flying object and you may have to buy another one. They don't want to be interrupted. I like this sentence. This This is from the book. My goal is to discover your thoughts and feelings. My objective is not to defend myself or set you straight. It is to understand you. That's quality time. You just have something to say? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, Two more real quick. Canceled plans. Quality time people hate it when you have plans with them and you cancel because they wanted to spend that time with you. They were looking forward to it. So canceled plans is a bad thing. That's a withdrawal. Not listening to them is also a major withdrawal. That's all for that. Ready to move on? Pay attention to this in your children also. Some some of you have children who who just absorb quality time. Uh, Our oldest son, Kirk, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's well into his adult years. And um, you, you can buy him anything, and that's great. But he wants to know, even now, even now, if he has a softball game, church league softball game. Hey, Mom, Dad, you coming to my game? Why? Because he's a quality timer. He likes quality time. He's not so much into gifts. Gifts are okay, but he wants your undivided attention. Even well into his 20s, he wants to know Mom and Dad still there to cheer him on. So it's something that people don't outgrow. It's something that they need. Recognize it and make the most of it. Yeah, He likes gifts too. He's his mama's boy. (laughs) Acts of service is the next one. This is doing something for you. Lightening your load. Making your life easier. 
We all like that. To some, it is life. To some, it's just nice. If acts of service is your love language, deposits are uh, someone doing a chore for you around the house without being asked. That's, that's the key. <laughs> somebody take notes. When somebody says amen, write that down. Who it was. <laughs> so you know how to love them. If you have to ask, it's not a deposit. Um, so doing something without being asked. And it has to be something that they want you to do. Okay? It can't be just... Folding the laundry, doing the dishes, mowing the grass. Something that helps make their life the easier. Going to grocery store. Yeah. Taking the dog for a walk. Putting gas in the car. Yeah. All of those things. Yeah, all those things. Um, cooking dinner, washing your car, like you said, any of those things um, are deposits. Withdrawals are laziness. An acts of service person cannot tolerate laziness. Neglecting the chores, not doing what you are expected to do. Do uh, not procrastinate, uh, oh, just do it. Just do it. Not following through, starting projects and not finishing them will drive an acts of service person up the wall. Causing them extra work. Can I hit this one? Yes. <laughs> Okay, 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 guys, listen to me. And I know we're tight on time. If you're, going, if you're going to be Superman and you're going to come home and you're going to make her dinner, okay, that's great. Clean your own mess up when you're finished. The meal can be great, but if there's dirty dishes in the sink, whoop, your, your tank went from here to, ooh, it, it's sucking bitterness right now. But man, if you clean that mess up, oh man, you are in. You, you, listen, you could go a month and not <laughs> be on the bottom there. Clean your mess up. Don't cause extra work. Yeah, that's good. It's just, man, you, you could, yeah, I cooked her a meal, man. It was, this was great, man. I'm the man. But you left the dirty dishes in the sink. And she was up until midnight washing them. And, and you're wondering why she's cold afterwards. <laughs> listen, men, listen. When something happens, when, when, when something happens and you think you're Superman and all at once she gets silent, you messed up somewhere. Because women can use silence like a weapon. It means you messed up. And the whole time you're trying to love her in the back of your mind, man, she's kind of cold. I'm not able to warm up. It's because you missed something somewhere along the way. It is good. It's the truth, too. You know how I know? I've done it. Oh, yeah. I've tried to be Superman, cook that meal, left the... I learned to clean up my dishes when I'm finished now. If I'm going to love her, I'm going to love her all the way. Good. All right, quickly. The next one is oh, yeah, gifts. Quickly. Giving and receiving of gifts. This is giving you something. Yeah. Deposits. Surprises. Gifts people love surprises. Good surprises. <laughs> Not necessarily bad ones. <laughs> what? Nothing, honey. <laughs> I'm just watching Presents. Um, Presents. It has, to, it has to be something that they like or want. It can't... Bad gifts are not a deposit. Bad gifts are a withdrawal. It's like, have you met me? <laughs> Why would you buy me this? <laughs> We've done that too. What? I said, We've done that too. We mean we. We, we. we haven't done anything here. We all know I've done it. You're just trying to be kind, loving me with words of affirmation is what you're trying to do. Yeah. We gotta move on. Yeah, receive, receiving gifts. This, this, this one was hard for me. It really was. I didn't understand it. And, and if someone's primary love language or even secondary love language is receiving gifts, they're not vain and they're not uh, materialistic. materialistic. Do, you, do you know, this is, this, is, this is my wife's, probably her primary love language is, is receiving gifts. And and she's far from vain and materialistic. But do you know how that was developed in her? Her dad did not 
always come to her and say, Tammy, I love you. He did not always come to her and pick her up and squeeze her and give her a hug. He told her he loved her every day when he would come home from the coal mines and there was a lunch cake left for little Tammy in his lunch bucket. And by that little lunch cake, he screamed, Tammy, I love you. And I'm paying the price for it. <laughs> and, you know, and you know, at first, man, I thought, Good night, I told you I love you. Isn't that enough? No, because she doesn't receive love that way. And I would do things for her, and man, that was all right. But I'd, I'd try to hug her and love her and touch her and... But man, when I learned if I'd buy her just a 98 cent cappuccino, woo, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> when, 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 when something goes off, write it down so you don't forget it. Yeah. And I'll tell you, this, this is what I did. This, this is no joke. This is what I did. I made a list. I, I, I made myself, not her, I made myself a list of her favorite things. And every now and then, I'll... Go buy one, whether it's a small, and it doesn't have to be expensive things. You can turn them away if you get overly indulge, if you kind of overly indulge in a gift. I well, remember, here's, here's the thing about, about gifts. It's not about, well, it kind of is about the gift, but <laughs> it has to be something that they do enjoy. Yeah. But, hey, let me tell you something. Hold on. Go ahead. It was the thought behind it. Lie. The thought does not count. Thought <laughs> means nothing. The thought does not count. And I'll tell you what else. The, the expense doesn't no. count. It has nothing to do with spending a lot of money. It has nothing to do with that. This is the gist of it right here. You were away from me, and you thought of me. That's what it has to do with right there. That sums it up. You were thinking of me. Yeah. Withdrawals. Forgetting birthdays, anniversaries, etc. <laughs> We don't have time. We don't. How many of you have ever forgot an anniversary? Pitiful. Papa Joe, did you raise your hand? Me and you, brother. Me and you. Yeah, hey, oh, it takes one time, is it? Yeah, one time. Yeah, one time. Yes, I did. Pray for me. I forgot once. <laughs> the 19th and, anniversary. <laughs> yeah, but I remember the 20th. Oh, I had a whole lot of makeup to do. That was a bad day. A, a, a big withdrawal for a gifts person is when they are expecting to receive a gift and they don't get oh, one. Jesus. That's that's a big deal to a gifts person. That's a big deal. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I could write a book <laughs> on what not to do. Do not forget an anniversary. <laughs> I'll never forget that day. <laughs> that was horrible. We ready to move on. I'm ready to move on. <laughs> the last one is physical touch. Yes, let's talk about that one. Yeah, it's a good is, one. You want to talk about that one? No. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, honey. That one more time. No, you, you, you start. I'll, All right. I'll jump in. Deposits, uh, physical touch is showing affection, okay, obviously. Deposits are hugs, kisses, holding hands, pats on the back, just being in physical contact with them. I like that. Yeah, I know. And to me, like, what's the big deal? <laughs> you just told me I'm the man a thousand <laughs> times right there. But I know this is a big deal to him. That's a big deal. Yeah, so just this. That's all. Just a a hand on the shoulder, you know, lets someone know that you care, that you love them. Um, Withdrawals are withholding physical affection, being cold physically. Um, Physical abuse uh, is just, it's horrendous anyway. But for the person who who receives love by physical touch, um, it's devastating, absolutely devastating. Do you have anything to say about that? That's all I've got on that. That's all you have on physical yeah. touch? It's 
the, what, what, what you have to understand is that um, a lot of times when someone receives love in a way that we don't, we don't get it. We think something's wrong with them and there's nothing wrong with them. It's the way that they're created. It, 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 by and large, a lot of times it's the way their parents raised them. Um, and, and that's just or something that was really absent. And, and, you know, like I said, you never, use, you never use a love language against someone to manipulate, control, seduce, deceive, anything. You don't do it. That, that, that's, that's wrong. It's just wrong. Um, and, and, you know, I, I just, I just, my wife and I just share with you, one of my primary love language is, um, is, is physical touch. Don't come up to me and be hanging on me just because. Don't do that. <laughs> don't. She's my physical touch person, and my kids are my physical touch people. Now, I might give you a hug, but don't, don't use that against me because I've got discernment too. But, you know, don't overlook the simple little things. You know, it doesn't have to be big things in the way that you love. The, the, the other day, I was sitting in my chair, and, and I don't know if I was studying. I don't know what I was doing. But my wife simply walked by, and she just tapped my foot. And I'm like, she tapped my foot. But she told me that she loved me. Do you understand? When you do the small things, it's great things for them. You just have to learn what their love language is. Take time. Sit down, have conversation about it. There's nothing wrong with it. Go home tonight and, 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 and figure out the love language of, of your best friend. Figure out the love language of your children, your spouse, or whoever. And begin to love them that way and watch how they respond. Watch how it strengthens that relationship. Watch how it brings a stronger bond. But I'm going to be honest with you. There's some of you that you know what their, their primary love language is. And you won't give it to them because you're, you, you want to manipulate them. Or you want to hold. I know it's bad, but it's going to get good. And you want to hold that back from them. And I'm going to tell you something. You're, you're acting like you've got it all together. You're deceived. Because now you know how to love them, and God knows whether you know how to love them, whether you're giving it to them or not. And don't you dare withhold it from them, because everyone deserves to be loved the way they were created to be loved. Do you understand? And some of you, you're going, some of your marriages are all jacked up. And you have the authority and the power within you to change it. You just need to love them correctly. You just need to love them the way God's designed them to be loved. Well, I don't want to because they won't give me what I want. They will if you love them, right? Let me tell you something. When I, when I love my wife, when, when I'll give her a gift or when I'll do something for her or when I give her some quality time, she is more than willing to give me what I need in my life. See, if we just learn how to give each other what the other one needs, we're able to walk together with each other in unity. I think many times we forget how powerful love really is. You see, God is love. God is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's omnipotent. God, God is he's, he's El Shaddai. He's more than enough God, is, for God is love. And if God is love, then he's called us to love one another. His word states that how many hundreds of times. Love one another. Love each other the way that I loved you. But many times we don't do that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. Yep, go ahead. When your love tank is full, you can love others out of the overflow of that. If your love tank is empty, you can't give what you don't have to give. You can't go around on, on empty in the love department and expect to love others well. And do you know that in the Word of God, there is a gauge, um, a love gauge, that will tell you how well you're doing at loving others. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. Love is patient. Are you patient? Then you're loving well. Love is kind. Are you kind? It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Are you easily angered? 
you're not loving well. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Yeah. Yeah. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So we can refer to that passage of scripture and go through all of those things. It's a checklist for our own heart. Am I loving well? How am I doing, Lord? Because God is all these things because God is love. And we're to reflect him mm -hmm. and be like him and show the world Jesus through the way that we love. The point is, is y'all stand to your feet. The point is, is that when we love, we invest. When we love, we're investing in others. We're, we're investing in the ones that we love. We're, you see, I, I can never go wrong when I love her the way that she was created to be loved because I'm really investing. And you see, we're all concerned about retirement, our 401k, and we're all concerned about what's down the road. We need to learn how to invest in the relationships around us right now. Because I don't have to wait for life to be good. Life's good now. I know that God loves me. The reason how I know that is because he gave his son for me. And I know that God loves me so much. Now, maybe you don't, but I know that God loves me so much that if I was the only human being that ever lived, he would have still sent his son for me. That's how he feels about me. God is passionately in love with me, and he's passionately in love with you. So tonight, I want you to get around this altar. If you want to love deeper, if you want to love greater, if you need greater love in your marriage, greater love with your children, greater love in relationships around you, get around this altar and ask the Lord to pour out. Maybe, you've been, maybe you recognize you've been loving each other the wrong way. Well, okay, adjust and love each other the way that they need to be loved, not want to be loved the way they need to be loved. Well, I, I'm here tonight and I'm single. This isn't doing anything for me. It'll do something for you if you listen to it. Because God has or is getting ready to bring someone into your life and you need to know how to love them. I'm telling you, this information can radically change your relationships around you if you just allow it to change you first. So you come as God deals with you. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you come because He gave His only Son for He loves you so much that He gave His only Son. That's how God showed us that He loved us. So you come as the Lord leads tonight. As J.D. and Nicole, as they play, they sing, you come and you ask the Lord to reveal the depths of His love to you and then ask Him to transform your life to love in the same magnitude that He loves you. You come as they sing.
Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. That love tanks that have been running on empty for a long time, even those watching by internet, Lord, I pray that you'd fill them up tonight. Lord, I pray that you would just radically transform relationships. Not just in this sanctuary, but, but all those that are watching by online tonight. Lord, I pray that we would have an understanding of love that we've never had before. And Lord, I pray that we learn to love each other in that magnitude. Lord, marriages that's been together for decades, barely surviving, just, just, just getting through, just, just surviving on, on, on barely a breath. Lord, I pray that they would let the past go and they would learn to love with the depths and the capacities that only you could give them to love. Father, I'm asking you to breathe fresh breath onto struggling relationships. Friendships, God, the people have been friends for, for many years, but it's been real, a real struggle here lately. Lord, help us to love each other the way that you've called us to. Lord, help us to love our children in an understanding way, Father. Lord, we're the ones that raised them. So, Lord, help us to love them the way they need to be loved, regardless of how old they may be. Father, I believe that you've started. I believe that you've started a move of God. And, Lord, it's to radically, radically transform the family. So, Lord, I pray that you'd start with us in this room right now. I pray you transform us. Transform us in the way that we love. Father, if we have strong marriages, no demon in hell can combine us. If we have strong marriages, we have strong families. We have strong families. We have strong churches. And no demon in hell can combine us. So, Father, I pray you'd help us. I pray you'd guide us and strengthen us. Help us to love one another in the way that you loved us. May we not hold anything back. Father, may we allow you to transform us day by day. And I thank you for it, Lord. Father, I pray you be with all these couples, all, these, all this family that's gathered together tonight, Father. I pray that you just be with them as they travel home tonight. I, I pray that you would just hold back the bad weather till they get home. And Father, I pray that you would just bless them beyond measure. Lord, I pray that they would take these words that have been spoken tonight. They would analyze these words. They would look at them. They would get into your word and line it up. And then, Father, I pray they would start loving all those around them in this capacity. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you're doing now. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said.